Hello, I'm Markus Hess from the Medical Voice Center in Hamburg, Germany, and this is my colleague Susanne Fleischer, and we will show you how we perform endoscopy. It is important to give a couple of thoughts on what happens when you rotate the endoscope. Now, what do we want to do? We want to rotate the endoscope 180 degrees, and as you can see with my arm and hand, I can easily do this while holding the endoscope and I can all the time control the lever if I'm in this mode or in that mode. If I would hold the endoscope like this and scope the patient, that means that 180 degrees rotation I can't do that with my hand alone. I have to lift my arm. And who wants to do this kind of management of the endoscope? Now, why is that a difference? The difference is because this is the neutral position when I hold it and rule it with a thumb. And all I can do is 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees that way. But if I start here, that would be 180 degrees. But nobody starts like that. Everybody starts like this. That means 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It's fine for a couple of movements, but not for the rotation. For the rotation, you need a position where you start from 0 degrees and can easily go 180 degrees. If you try this out, you will see this is manageable very easy, whereas this from neutral position, you can only go like that and that. That's the big difference. Now these endoscopes are not made for ENT doctors in the first place, but they are great endoscopes if you want to do it and if you adapt your handling to the range of motion of your arm and your hand. So while I'm in, first of course I want to have an overview. How does the larynx look like? I ask her to extend the neck a little bit so that I can have a nice view. And usually I would of course go inside with a dipping maneuver but now I want to rotate. Now rotation is a combination of what you do with your hand while you rotate. Let's have a look what happens. So this is 180 degrees and as you can see when I rotate 180 degrees I have an oblique view into the larynx. What I want is I want to come back into the larynx from the straight position, so I turn her head. Turn to the right means exposure of the right vocal fold, as you can see. Turning to the left means exposure of the left vocal fold. Let's turn even more. As you can see, this is kind of an awkward exposure. If you get used to it, it is very helpful. Let's go all the way to the right side and then I can expose even more. Now if I combine this with the dipping maneuver, first I ask her to swallow because my image is a little bit blurred and now I will ask her to give me a long inspiration. Did you see the right vocal fold? And now I'm going back. Now what happened to my endoscope here? Now when I'm in the straight position, the endoscope seems to be very straight. That was different than we had the situation before. I think it's because the endoscope is on the back of the vertebra. And then as you can see, when I advance it a little bit more, it will flip over to the other side sometimes. And now let's go this way. Did you see that little jerky movement? That's the back of the 
hypopharynx. And now let's see the left vocal fold. Let's do the dipping maneuver and ask her first to exhale and inhale through the nose. And do you see now, and I was able to look into the Morganis ventricle. Give me a long inhalation again. And exhale. I was also able to look underneath, inferior to the vocal fold on the left side. Inhale again. Exhale. Now I want to see the right side again. Inhale. Morganese ventricle. Exhale. Inferior vocal fold right side. Inhale. And, and inspiratory, you can see that she even abducts a little bit more. Now I want to see the same with NBI. Give me a long inspiration. Exhale. Turn your head again. And inhale. I don't want to miss the moment when she stops with inspiration, when the lungs are full because I want to go out of the larynx with the tip of the endoscope. Now, not all patients are tolerating it as good as Susanna does. What I want to do is I want to come into the larynx straight from the back. That's the best position. I don't want to touch the arytenoid on the medial aspect on this side or that side. That's why we have to learn with the rotation maneuver also to turn the head. Let's see what happens when she over extends, extends the neck. Inhale. Isn't that a beautiful view onto the laryngeal aspect of the epiglottis? So where's the best position to place the tip of the endoscope when I want to rotate? Now I don't want to rotate up here because then, as you can see, when I rotate here, I will move into the tissue of the nasopharynx and mesopharynx. My preferred position is at the tip of the epiglottis and then try to counter act with the lever so that I always stay a little bit in the straight position looking down because then it's an actual rotation. Sometimes I even go more down here so as long as I see lumen I know that it does not hurt the patient too much. So as you can see I rotate and then I pull this lever backwards so that I see the lumen and then I rotate the head and counteract with the lever here. So this is something that one has to train while doing that. If you have an instrument in a channeled endoscope this is even more important. Now let's just do one more thing. Let me have this endoscope and hold it with my thumb. If I want to hold it with my thumb, the rotation is not as easy because as you can see I have to lift my arm to go 180 degrees. This is not very convenient for me as endoscopist. That's why I prefer this kind of handling because here the rotation goes very smooth actually with my underarm and with my hands.